Hey guys, the battle for Azeroth is looming, so I thought it would be handy to make a general tips and tricks video of things you can do to optimize things a bit and save yourself some headaches. I'll try to keep this video as spoiler free as possible, but note that I did make it during the last month of the beta, so stuff could change at release. I have 16 things in total, so let's get into it. Let's start with the biggest stuff and work our way down. First is, if you're watching this at or before launch, you should really consider activating war mode. As you know, we got this in patch 8.0, and it gives you a selection of special honor talents to use that greatly increase your power, and you also get plus 10% experience, to name just two of the bonuses. You get put in a special instance, along with other people who have war mode enabled, and you can freely attack and be attacked by players of the opposite faction. So, from a leveling standpoint, it's a huge boost. Not just the XP bonus, but also the honor talents since they increase your kill speed in general. The Affliction Warlock allows us to pick a talent that gives us near-permanent unstable afflictions, for example. I'm sure your spec has something just as powerful, right? It's really noticeable, and the only reason you wouldn't want it active from a leveling standpoint is if you get ganked over and over, thus decreasing your speed overall. But with the way BFA works, to start off, the Alliance and Horde are in different islands, and you won't even really see each other at launch. You can establish footholds and whatnot, which I'll go over in a bit, and go to the other faction zones, but that's pretty isolated, and for the first few days, 99% of the people you see should be from your faction. So, at least at launch, war mode will be very advantageous, even if you're not a PvPer. So give yourself a boost for the first few days, and maybe if you start seeing the opposite faction after that, and you're not big into PvP, just go ahead and switch it off in your main city. When you first start BFA content, you'll have a choice of zones to start questing in. Each one of these zones has a specific reputation tied to them, and if you want a nice head start at 120, you should try to get at least one of these factions to the honored level. And that's because each one sells you a 320-ish blue cloak at Honored, which is way higher than any of the questing gear that you get. And to take it further, they even sell you some purples at Revered and Exalted, so if you want to maximize things, you should try to level these evenly. Maybe even get at least one faction to Revered by the time you hit 120 if you can. That might be tough though, unless you have some rep bonuses or something. But still, it's important to know, so I thought I'd just bring it up so it doesn't slip by you. I'll have a link to each of these vendors in the description if you'd like to preview them. The next piece of advice for those of you looking to level quickly is to look out for a gem called an Insightful Ruby. This is a new gem crafted by Jewel Crafters, of course, and it gives you a 5% boost in experience gained. You can only learn it when BFA launches, so it might take a while until you start seeing them on the auction house, but every time you're in your main city, you should do a quick check for them. Only buy one though, because as you can see, they're unique equipped. And if you're a jewel crafter yourself, this is a good opportunity to make some gold early on. You'll learn the recipe for it right away from the BFA jewel crafter. And of course, if you do plan on buying one, Make sure you save at least one piece of gear with a socket, because socketed gear is hard to come by from the quest rewards. And speaking of gold making, if that's a priority for you, you might want to consider picking up double gathering professions for your first character. That's because, no matter what, at the beginning of every expansion, all trade goods are ridiculously inflated in price. One hour of farming at launch could be equivalent to one day of farming just a few weeks after. As you can see, here are some examples from Legion. You can see how crazy it starts off. So with ore, herbs, and hide being the easiest to get, you can earn yourself quite a bit of gold. No worries about leveling anything, by the way. Professions are split up by expansion now, so even if you just learned it, you can still harvest all of Zandalar's and Kul Tarras's goods. Shortly after arriving in the new zones, you should also be introduced to the Scrapomatic 1000. Think of this as the remake of the Obliterum Forge in Legion. Basically, the way this works is you can put BFA level greens and blues and whatnot inside of it, 
and it'll break it down into some trade good materials. If you put in a robe, you'll get some BFA cloth. If you put in a plate piece, you'll get some ore. You get the gist. Again, these trade goods will be very pricey at launch, so this is much more preferable than to just vendor them. One of the things we're losing with the end of Legion are the legendaries, but it's not immediate. In fact, with their high eye level, it takes a while to replace them with the questing gear, and you keep the affix until level 116, at which point it'll gray out and become inactive. With the latest patch, you should have gotten a thousand of those free essences in the mythic chest in your order hall, even if you didn't do a mythic, and you can now just buy whatever legendary that you want, and you can also get them from world quests now too. So with this in mind, pick and wear the ones that you'll think will be the best for leveling. A good one for every class pretty much is the Kill Jaden Trinket for its AoE. It helps a lot if you like to gather a bunch of enemies at once. Keep in mind that we're getting a new feature called Azerite Armor. This is special armor that's tied to your amulet, head, shoulders, and chest, so preferably you want to hang on to legendaries that aren't in those slots. And just like the previous expansion, the new zones are chock full of rare elites and treasures. If you kill or collect them, you get a fair amount of XP, gold, Azerite for your armor, etc but most importantly, war supplies. These are used for your new mission table, which I'll go over in a bit, and they're gonna be really important right out of the gate, so if you see a treasure or a rare on your minimap, you always wanna go out of your way to get it. Plus, the XP is pretty nice too, so it's still worth it for that alone. Although some of the treasures don't give any, I'm not sure if that's a bug or not. If an add-on for these rares and treasures is released by the time I post this video, Check the description, and I'll have a link to it for you. Let's talk about the mission table for a bit, since I already mentioned it. Shortly after arriving in Zandalar or Kul Taras, you'll get a quest to get 100 of those war supplies I mentioned earlier. This leads to the new mission table, so again, when you're out questing, you want to kill every rare you see and grab every single chest. The sooner you get 100 supplies, the better, so you can send your followers out on missions while you're leveling, and knock out two birds with one stone. Once you get all 100, you get a bit of story which I won't spoil for you, and you also get your first follower, and a quest which requires you to complete a table mission. Right now, on the beta, it's just two hours long, so start that as soon as you can. You'll also get a quest to set up a foothold in enemy territory. This is part of something called your war campaign found in your quest log. Basically, it's a special quest that sends you to enemy territory to complete a few quests and establish a foothold for your faction. You get a choice of three at first. It doesn't matter which one you pick since you do them all eventually anyways, but you're going to want to do this as soon as you can as well because not only do you get another piece of Azerite armor and a bunch of Azerite, but also another follower that you can send on more missions. The sooner you get these guys, the faster you can level them, the better missions you can get, and the better rewards you can get, so they should be a high priority if you want to optimize things. It doesn't take too long, about 30 minutes or so if you don't run into any hiccups. Speaking of which though, like I said, this is enemy territory, so if you took my advice earlier and you turned on war mode, you may want to temporarily disable it, just until you set up the foothold. The area you'll be questing in will be swarmed with enemy players, so at launch, it'll be a pretty dangerous place, and you might benefit by switching that off temporarily. Once you complete it though, you get a few flight paths, which is handy, that Azerite and Azerite armor like I said, and another follower. Each foothold gives you a new follower, and you can pick additional zones at levels 114 and 118 as of this build, so as soon as they're available, you should quickly knock them out. They're also required to eventually unlock world quests and get your Flight Master's Whistle, which teleports you to flight paths just like Legion, so you may as well do them while you get XP for them. After your first foothold, you also unlock the ability to train those work order troops, don't go too crazy with your resources though, because you'll need more for the research, so let's talk about that. 
You unlock this research at level 114. The first tier costs just 15 more supplies, and it only takes 4 hours, and the second tier costs 100 for one day, so you want to try and stay above 115 before you reach this point, so you can afford everything. It works how you would expect it, it's pretty much the successor to the Legion Order Hall advancement. Out of two choices for each tier, you can pick a special trait that gives you a bonus while traversing the new BFA zones. As you can see, each tier has their own special requirement before you can research them, such as unlocking followers, doing the new island expeditions, and more. The bonuses are reduced hearthstone cooldown or a mount speed increase after landing from a flight path at 114, and at 118, an increase to your maximum consumable recruited troops, or the ability to train them instantly, and so on with several more at 120. They range in cost from 15 resources for the first like I mentioned, to 500 for the last, which is why you don't want to go too crazy with those consumable troops at first. You'll benefit more from the research more than those troops, so only grab those if you find that you have an excess of war supplies. Traversing these zones can be tricky sometimes since we can't fly yet. Another thing you can do to prepare is to pick up some gliders off of the auction house. There are lots of peaks and buildings you can use these off of to save yourself a headache going through a monster infested chasm or whatever, so they're worth it. In the same vein, you should also pick up a water strider. There's a ton of water, as you would imagine, especially in the Alliance zones, so having water walking of any form is very helpful. This mount of course walks on water, and you can get it from the Angler's faction in Pandaria after a little rep grinding. I'll have a link to a wowhead guide in the description if you need it. The better gear you have, the faster you can level of course, so you should take advantage of the new catch -up mechanic released in 8.0. Without trying to spoil too much, if you do your story quests with Darnassus, you should unlock some world quests in the Darkshore zone, and these can give you at least eye level 210 gear, which is pretty good. Definitely a nice boost for those of you who didn't raid much in Legion, or you just want to catch up and alt or something. Plus, they can Warforge too, which is a nice bonus. So, check out those world quests periodically leading up to the launch, and knock them out if you see any upgrades. And lastly for the big tips, across your leveling, you may come across something called an Abyssal Fragment. These are very rare drops off of Naga-related enemies in the Stormsong Valley Zone. Nagas, eels, water creatures, and so on. If you collect 20 of them, they lead to a secret mount called the Nazchitar Blood Serpent. I won't go into too much details for spoiler's sake, but I'll have a wowhead link in the description if you're curious. So, just wanted to throw that out there. If you get these, don't destroy them, whatever you do. So that's it for the big stuff, I'd say. Next, we have some various housekeeping things. Random stuff you should probably do to prepare for a smooth launch. First is to sell all of your junk and to clear up your bags. If you're a hoarder like me, you probably have all sorts of Legion stuff lingering about. Follower leveling tokens, old gear, ancient mana items. So make sure that you clear all of that out before launch, so you don't have to vendor every 30 minutes while you're questing. The most efficient bags right now, in terms of space and cost, is Hexweave I believe, which are 30 slaughters. And another one is to clear out your quest log. The last thing you want is to hit the quest cap and stall yourself trying to figure out which ones are important and which ones aren't, so definitely take care of that now. If you get lost at any point and you can't figure out how to get back to Zandalar or Kul Tiras, maybe your hearth is on cooldown or something or you didn't want to set it there, you can always find portals back there in your major city. For the Alliance, it's right here in the Mage Tower in Stormwind, and for the Horde, it's right here in Orgrimmar. There are also boats marked on your map in your respective harbors. And some miscellaneous very minor tips to go out on is you can also pick up some bear tartar if you want. Unfortunately, this got nerfed in the pre-patch. It used to give you a raw 70% speed bonus, but it was just changed to 250 speed rating, 
which is just like 18% increased movement speed at level 110 and 9% at 120. So it is very minor, but it doesn't hurt and it'll give you a little speed boost whenever you kill an enemy. Another item is the Guild Battle Standard. Once again, kind of minor since it's only for mob kills, but you buy this from your guild vendor in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, and when you put it down, it'll give you some bonus experience whenever you kill an enemy. It's best used when you just arrive in an area where you have like three quests or whatever. And the last tip I'll share is to have fun. All in all, it's about 12 hours I'd say if you focus on just leveling. I think they did a pretty good job with it, this expansion so far, so you'll do yourself a favor by actually reading the quests and sort of immersing yourself in this little world that they created. I hope you found these tips handy, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.